Uh, so what's your best bet of the week? What, 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 if you, what have you gone for? Uh, the best handicapped horse of the week. Gaelic okay. Warrior in the Boodles. Oh, now he'd be on my shortlist for lay of the week. Yeah, well, is he? Well, this idea that he's the best handicapped horse, you know. You don't know. It's a bit of guessing. Yeah, exactly. But he, on what the other horses have done that were around him in yeah, his yeah, races yeah, in yeah. France, Working out right. he could be up to yeah. 20, 25 pounds well in. He is 10 pounds well in on what the French handicapper thought he is. On what the other, there are some horses he's been around that are now rated in the 150s. Obviously, they could have improved and this horse could have gone backwards. So there is an element of guessing. But it appears that this is as close to a Sir Mark Prescott loophole as you can get. Yeah. And there was speculation that the, the, the handicapper put the wrong, just yeah. had a fat finger bone. I'm I hoping it's that's... unsinkable boxer in, yeah. the bog, in the body of Gaelic Warrior. I don't think it's, that's true, but I, I, I understand they've dropped all of those uh, French juveniles by about ten pounds, so, so, so it's kind of the right mark. But he could be, he could be thrown in. What about you, Shawnee? Uh, Banker was kind of easier. I went for a race which I thought is pretty much a two-horse race, where one is an odds-on shot and the other one isn't. Uh, so my banker, Matt, you'll be pleased to know, is in Ergumen to win the champion chase. You know, you do understand that the banker's meant to be the winner. Yes. Okay. Yes, I do. What I, I tell you what, it's, it's, it's a price thing for me. It's a price thing for me. We, it's a great thing that we saw these horses meet at Ascot because we've got a benchmark to look at and to, and, and, and to make assessments on. And on that, there's a length between them. Now, I, I, I think it's fair to say that an argument is probably better going right-handed. So Ascot probably suited him better and everything went right for him. But visualise it. Who's in front three out? Inergumen. Who's in front two out? Inergumen. Unless something else has taken him on, of course. And he's already Nothing given up the ghost. Nothing will live with him. And, and uh, you're they right, there are other different? horses in the, in the, in the field. Uh, um, the reigning champion might be up there, mightn't she? But will you be worried if Town then picks Chacun and Poursois? No, not massively. You will, a little bit. A, a little bit of you would just say, well, oh, we'll be, no. get, we'll be getting a nice surprise. Um, did you get hold of Mr. Bloom and get his views on this? Um, they think they've got a great chance. Yeah. But I think now they understand. She, I th look, my opinion, I think what Tony feels is that everything went right at Ascot and yeah. they didn't win. They've so got a length to find, though. And it's a slightly shorter trip at Cheltenham. I've, I've sure, it's one mistake on the way round. Shishkin exactly. makes one exactly. significant error. Obviously, an ergamine can make a significant error. But at yeah. the end of the day, it, there's not a lot between them, yeah. except there's going to be more at Cheltenham than there was at Ascot. Give us a... What, what should we do next? Lay, lay of the week? I've got to lay honeysuckle. Yeah. I, um, I think her form is questionable. I think there are one or two in there that have capabilities. Um, appreciate it, obviously, because he's a monster of a horse. He's going to dwarf Honeysuckle for a start. Um, but the other thing is, I'm going on the basis, if not so sleepy starts well, he could certainly harass Honeysuckle up front. Um, now, I'm expecting Appreciate It to run prominently as well, so you could argue Appreciate It might be harassed as well. But for that reason, I think... You know, she might she might just be different gravy. She gets the seven pounds, which like means that appreciate it has to run miles better than he's ever run before. But I just want to take her on. I don't think she's a worldie. Appreciate. I didn't think she was impressive last time. And old Ronald Trump, I, call, I like to call him. I get told off for that because he's of course he's called Ronald Pump. I call him Ronald Trump. Um, Ronald Trump's run terribly since she beat him, um, and I'm not rating. Her. I just don't rate her form that that well. But she keep look, Sean. She's amazing. I appreciate she's amazing. Yeah. Win 14 races on the trot, she's amazing. But she's going to get beat at some point. We started by saying it's about opinions, isn't it? And some people t take offence when you yeah. take on a horse. She's right. going to get beat I'm eventually. Never, not going to go yeah. through the whole of her career without, without losing. My late, and I do this with a slightly heavy heart, and I do it slightly to, to sort of make a point. You mentioned... Oh, shish. Uh, dude, uh, what, what happens if GB don't win uh, the Supreme and the Arc? And I, uh, you have to remember, the chances of us doing that, of winning both of those races... If you go on the odds, it's about a five to one shot. You know, so we are far more likely not to win those two races. And we're you relying on John Bond misery. and Constitution <laughs> Hill. So my lay would be to take on the Henderson pair in the Supreme, which would be around about an even money shot. So you lay both John Bond and Constitution Hill. Constitution Hill is going to do something that he's never ever been asked to do before. Every, every, nearly everything is different. He's run right-handed on heavy ground. This is a very, very different proposition. I like John Bond, actually. I really like John Bond. I think he's got lots of tools in his armory. But at the prices, I think we can we can take them on because there is strength and depth in there. The Irish, the Irish challenge is stronger than I think we give it credit for in that Supreme. I, 
I'm not saying they have no chance. I'm not that concerned about the Henderson form, which some people are. But I'm, I just think this idea that we're behind the eight ball if we don't win the Supreme and the Arco is a bit mad because there's about an 85% chance that we won't win both of them. It's much more likely than not that we won't win both of them. And uh, well, what a misery you are! Sean. I'm sorry. You I'm are sorry. A misery. It doesn't mean. Instead, doesn't I'm mean getting a load of stick any winners. about that. Just very quickly, I'm getting a load of stick about Dyson Dynamo's definitely going to lead uh, yes. in the Supreme. Because you predict well, Kilcrut would lead. Well, uh, Kilcrut. I mean, I can only say I spoke to Tony Mullins, who of course was he, he thinks it will lead. Um, it made all at Punchestown last time. Um, it, it disputed lead the time before at Leopardstown, and it tracked winner at Court. Now. Obviously, I don't know what Willie Munns is going to tell the jockeys, but Kilcrut is a very, very strong stair. I mean, put it like this. If he's held up, he cannot win. So he's been a slightly forgotten horse, I think, in the, in, in the build-up. And, and if they take each other on, that would be kind of thick. OK, give us a long shot. Um, long shot, I'm going with the same owner as my banker. And the horse is five o'clock in the Martin Pipe Conditional. Is it still conditional? Uh, Martin Pipe, I think it is. Um, now, five o'clock last ran when? In the Martin Pipe Conditional of 2020, two years ago. Right. Beaten four and a bit lengths by Indefatigable. But just check out the in running comment for five o'clock, something that a lot of people never really looked at. And the in running comment reads In touch, not much room. Hampered and nearly unseated rider on bend after fourth, dropped to midfield after, ridden to get on terms approaching last, stayed on towards finish. It is very obvious that five o'clock probably should have won that Martin Pipe. He's now four pounds lower two years later. This is, this is quite interesting because by spooky coincidence, my long shot was in the same race <laughs> and finished, Not about, Road. finished about half a length or so in front of you, I oh, think. Right. And that is the boss's Oscar. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, for Gordon Elliott, who has been totally unmentioned in every stable tour, every preview, which I think is a positive when it comes to no, Gordon you're in the Martin, <laughs> you're in the Coral Cup, according to this, Sean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, but, mine's but, in the but Martin Pipe. Oh, no, sorry, but mine ran in the Martin Oh, Pipe. right. He ran in the Martin Yeah, Pipe I get it, I get 2020. it. 2020. Yeah. And then last year, he ran in the Potemps. He was second in the Potemps off 151. I think right. he runs off 154, 154. Yeah, 154. He's only a few pounds higher this year. Pulled up over fences his last twice. So he's kind of totally off the radar. I've got no idea how he'll Your picture there, boys. It's, very, it's quite a good one, isn't it? You, you must have been quite happy with that. Yeah, I'll take Look it. Look at you. Yeah.